My name is Roger Armstrong. I was born a psychic child in 1930. Protective intention attached. PIA, to prevent misuse. Hello, this is psychic training number nine. It's about the 30,000 year old spiral village that welcomes Roger as a solid astral projection. And I joined uh, uh, they, uh, Rita and Lily accepted me as family and they're all telepathic. So everybody wanted to meet, uh, uh, everybody was pleased that their, uh, ancestors, uh, lived in, uh, in, uh, in 2008, you know, and, uh, so I was welcomed and they were interested in my, our society and how it developed and how it changed in theirs. And, uh, they were disappointed that, uh, uh, it had gone downhill more than uphill in terms of mass killing and that kind of stuff. And uh, 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 not taking care of the way food is grown, and though that's all getting better. But anyway, so I called them the spiral people. And they, invi they invited me to some of their celebrations, uh, uh, some of which... Uh, uh, were very, very uh, uh, poignant and uh, about their philosophy of life and stuff. And then they'd have a celebration, and uh, then I'd go to the celebration. I got introduced, and I had to stand in line and shake everybody's hand. They wanted all to meet this, uh, this guy, you know, from, what, 20,000 years in the future. Now, I was dressed like they were dressed, and Lily and uh, Rita made sure. So I had red boots. I had a, uh, a, a, a robe that almost came to the floor, but I don't know what you call it, an afghan? Is that a, just a, a cut, and then it, it draped all the way down, and you had a belt, and it was like a Sam Brownie. You had a wide red belt here as the adult. And then you had this belt go over your shoulder, and that's where your sword was. And, uh, uh, and since I was trained by Grandpa to the sword when I was uh, six, why, uh, and I had used it occasionally, why, uh, I was pretty good with it. And I had practiced and, and, and on my own and stuff, so... And if I really got into a spot, I could always bring it up an ancestor that was really good with it and, and take over my body like a channeling. And I've had to do that a couple of times too. But anyway, and they danced the Shadish. Now the Shadish is an old Finnish-Polish dance done in those two countries, basically. And it's like a polka, but with a skip, as I remember it. But now, since I was going to be there for about six hours, I was concerned about conserving my energy. So when I projected myself there, I only projected the upper half of my body. And so when we were dancing, you could feel the ladies trying to see if I had a rump or not, you know. And we laughed about that. Rita told me to expect it. And Lily did too. But I had some nice adventures with the, with those uh, those people, and through them, I met uh, one of the people uh, that was in charge of the off-world construction company's uh, adventure on Earth. And uh, she was the architect for most of the temples. She did a lot of work in India. Uh, she was like everybody else, uh, a little stockier than most. Uh, she had uh, the only, she had two main differences, physical differences. One was which she had four arms, and the other is she had only three digits on her hand. Now I have some friends that are involved in. Uh, antiquity restoration in the country of India. 
And they said some of the earliest temples and gods depicted in those temples had four arms and had three digits. And the Vescu mathematics is based on three. I found that fascinating. Besides that little thing, and they all, most of their buildings were uh, 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 flat-topped te uh, temples, and they were astonished uh, at the square-square idea. And it fits so well. And they took it back to their restoration crew and taught the whole restoration crew to see the square-square as gateways. So their temples then were gateways. And they said they had a lot of fun with it. But anyway, I was telling the story in, um, in a uh, uh, um, grocery store. And the guy was telling the story. He said, Roger, did you know what the Russians have recently found? And I said, no, what? He said, all across the top of Siberia, there was a, ser there was a civilization of a series of cities about a hundred miles apart, all across the top of Siberia. And the farmers farmed in spirals. I love stuff like that. So what I saw, what I was experiencing, as I expected, was real. It's always nice to have confirmation. Now, out of body is just adding to the remote viewing ability. You just visualize, instead of visualizing your eyes go out, you visualize your body as a ghost going out. And what's fun is, that seems to be a natural form for local transportation, if you want to look at it that way, especially at night. And if you go up as an astrol at night, you will find quite a few people up there doing the same thing. And they do follow the leader and tag your it and hide in clouds and uh, talk with each other and go visit different parts of the world or go visit the moon or they can do all these variety of things, but they all uh, do it at, at their nighttime. Most of them do it through uh, lucid dreaming. But with a square square you don't need to do that. But this vision board also opens a portal and you can just go out. It's just another variation of the vision board. And you can visit anytime, anywhen, anywhere. And like I said, uh, um, it's uh, super reliable. Um, my friend that uh, is a vice president in the uh, International Society of Lucid Dreamers or something like that, they have an international association, uh, runs contests, and he does triple blind contests because he's, he's a scientist, you see, and so he selects photographs gives them to someone else, about 10 photographs. They put 10 photographs in 10 different envelopes by another person, and he's not there. And then they're given to another person who selects one of those and gives it to Ed as a, uh, as the, as, uh, the military word is target. Uh, the non-military word is home. And it's astonishing. He has a sheet that you fill out you, to do a little drawing of the photograph. Uh, any emotions or anything like that you get from the photograph, you add in. And they have about 150, 175 entrants. They're all very close. Um, 
but there'll be like four that are so detailed. One of the ones he used was a photograph of a fountain in Italy, in a courtyard. And one entrant even duplicated the flagstones, the correct number of flagstones around the fountain. And she was disqualified because she wasn't drawing the photograph. She drew the actual site. And the rule said, photograph. I told that I thought he was uh, being a little bit tight ass about that, but uh, that's okay. That's his, you know, thing. But very interesting that that many of them would get that kind of detail with no way in the world of knowing. No way would they know what it was. So here you have something that is multi-reality in terms of its structure. Now, when you go out as a, a, a uh, as a uh, astral, you just go out as a wispy ghost. You go out as an astral, and there are two styles that happen with people. One style is that you're attached to your corporal body, your sleeping body, or your resting body, with a silver cord that stretches infinitely, but it's attached to, the, to like your tailbone, and then attached to the abdomen of your sleeping body, or your resting body. In discussions about this with my friend, we dis we because this is the way he goes out. And he says his soul is still in his resting body. That when I go out and I don't have that attachment, that means my soul is going with me. And I says, well, what's the significance of that? And he said, well, Roger, when you go out and you're going out astral with your soul, you can be killed. Because your soul is with you. When I go out, if I get wounded or killed, I just snap back to my body because my soul is there. And your soul is where the life is. Oh, okay. So I thought that was a very interesting distinction. I've read several books that people have written about their uh, 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 astral experiences, and they're all, uh, all of them were attached to a cord, a silver cord. Except I never have been, and uh, uh, some of the people I have gone with, uh, my Mexican shaman friend, uh, she didn't have a cord. And she was, she also appeared in the uh, Valley of the Spiral People. Sounds like a book, doesn't it? And uh, she was their main, she ran their clinic, their healing clinic, which I thought was interesting. Now, this is Roger Armstrong, and I'm always interested in your comments.